Hello. Um, so I'm at this part here. So what I've done, I've done all the stuff in the center. I've done the um, bowl. I've done the cup in the bowl. I've done the plate that the bowl is on. A lot of the lips is there, as you can see, which takes time. Once it's done, it's done. Um, I did do the transparency here. I can lighten this up, and, but I'll do that later on. What I want to do next, oh, yeah, well, I can do that later, but the, what I want to show you what I did is I put in this um, board, and this is a cutting board that's down here. Really easy to put in. I'm just going to kind of show you how I went about it, and then I want to start to draw this guy, but I'm going to have to move um, myself here because it's always on the other side of my drawing, and I'll just kind of move the camera as well. So, but just to show you how I, like for example, this, this is a straight line for me, right? And then I'm trying to get the angle, but for you, I guess that would be a straight line, right? Because it's right in the, right in the viewfinder. And I'm trying to find the angle of this, right? So once you sight the angle, you just put the same angle over on this side. Um, the side of me in the drawing. But I'm gonna do that as you're watching me. And again, I'm just using this as a straight line and it's kind of nice to hold it straight up because it's a big line I'm trying to, to um, transfer. So what I did is I, I saw where this um, box here overlaps the line and I put it right on the top line there. And you can't really see exactly what I'm doing, but you get the idea. And then I transfer that line here and you can kind of see it's about the same. Okay, it's the same angle. So I basically threw two of those angles or two of those diagonal lines in based off my sighting. And when I sighted, I brought it over, over here. I just looked at my line of the ruler, turn it this way, and I just found that it um, intersected this line that was here. I made a visual mark. And when I took the ruler down, I marked it. And I did the same thing on this side. That way I can just, of course, that way I can, um, really draw a line quickly. Don't do what I just did. That annoyed the heck out of me. All right. So, um, so you can kind of see that I put this in and I'll put it in a little darker so I can show you. But the reason I put this in first and I didn't draw these little, um, coffee pods or the, um, coaster there. That's a coaster. If you don't know what that is upside down and it looks like a hockey puck, but I put that in after the fact because I wanted to make sure it fits within this space here. If I put it in first and then I started to work what's underneath around it, it would just be more difficult. And some of those things you have to find out by doing it. You just might try one thing like, man, I wish I put the other object in first. Uh, and that's the learning curve that you're going to have to go through. So now I put my lines in. The other things I sight are the other lines. So you use a vertical and then you're going to sight those lines. And you can kind of run it over here and see this is even more of a diagonal. So I put those in, I put this in. I also figured out how far out um, this corner was compared to this lip from my point, point of view. From your point of view, it's not that far. From my point of view, it's further. And because I've been making this video, I've been moving my head back and forth and I forget where I started. So I'm, I'm committing to one and it's about half the distance of the width of the bowl. And that's what I kind of added here a little less than half. And, and then I, um, I put the line here, I sighted the angle, I put the angle in and that's it. And then what a lot of people get wrong is over here is the height of this. You're going to draw this. This is where your brain starts to come in and say, Hey, that's a cutting board. That's about this big. We cut on that all the time. We know that well. Why would you draw that so small? That's ridiculous. The reason why you're drawing it so small in terms of height is because you're drawing on a flat surface. You're making the illusion of something going back in space. So now that you know perspective and things that are close to your eye level, the top plane starts to shrink. So this plane here is small. You don't know exactly how small it is unless you compare it or run the line into something. So you can see on the very back, uh, maybe you can't see there, but uh, maybe, oh, I'm trying to point, right, I'm trying to do this, sorry. If this is the front, right, 
right about there is the back. And, and you can kind of see where it intersects the um, cardboard box there. And that's where it intersects right here. A lot of people, a lot of students, when they first start drawing, they'll make this thing huge. They'll make it about this big. And it looks like this cutting board's now coming up like this and everything's sliding and it's sliding downhill and everything's sliding on top of it downhill. It needs to go back in space, not sliding downhill. So that top plane's gonna be much smaller than you think it is. And that's why your brain, your cognitive perception, thinks it knows better than your perceptual um, perception, if you want to call it that. Uh, so trust your eyes. Again, I said this before, trust your eyes. And the only way to know the truth is if you compare it to something else, because that the truth is there and you have to find the information. And if you don't find the information, you're making it up. And if you make it up, that's wrong. It's false. You're giving false information. Right. Um, now, it's pretty simple for me to put this in, the, these pods in. I can do that at another time. This tissue box that you can't see, but I will angle this over so you can. There's a tissue box there. That's super easy to put in because it's no different than this thing. I just have to cite the angles. And I already have my rectangle set. That's easy. The tissue itself makes it a little more challenging, but that's not hard either. At the very end, I'm going to put these little straws in, but that's super easy as well. But what I'm going to do now is... Uh, this thing now that you can see it right here. So I believe if I angle this here, that might work. Because the nice thing about a symmetrical form like this, I could walk around the room and it's not going to change its dimension. The only thing that's going to change is the height of this ellipse as I get closer and further away from it. Other than and the other ellipses that exist there. Other than that, it's a symmetrical form, so it's the same in the round. Can you see this? Yes, you can. Okay, so here's my rectangle, and I'm drawing this form here. Um, pardon me for a second. The weather just dramatically changed, and and they got dark, so hopefully that light can will help. Okay, so here's the rectangle here. I'll outline it a little bit more, a little darker so you can see it. But before I do that, I'm just going to outline this just so you can kind of see that uh, cutting board I was talking about. Another thing too, these lines are so parallel to, or so close to one another it's easier to make them parallel too. Don't worry about the converging here. It's gonna be so subtle, you won't even see it. So I just wanted to put that in. It's funny, because once you put that in, it gives, it gives you a sense of place. At some point I'll put the uh, cable line in too. I'll do something like this. Okay. Um, I'm gonna erase, lightly erase the stuff that's inside of it. like it's center, so I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to outline everything that's inside of this form. And I'm using, I want you to use an H when, when you're doing this, but I'm using a, a B so you can see what I'm doing in the video because it's hard to pick up. So again, I already put my um, rectangle in, so that's my height and width, my location. That's all done, I don't have to worry about that. Now I just only have to worry about breaking down the form. So, the ellipse. I'm going to measure the ellipse and I'm gonna do everything based off this. I don't really have to measure comparing to this guy again for, for this particular object. So I'm gonna measure the height of that uh, mouth of the ellipse and I'm gonna compare it to its width. One, two, three. It's a little less than four. The width counts in a little less than four, or the height of the young. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna guess. I'm gonna guess it's that big. So use your handy dandy paper. There we go. 
see if this counts in four cups. Interesting. One, two, three, four. Six. Yeah, probably go a little bigger. I'm good with that. I just want a little bigger because it counted almost five. So I just want a little, little bigger and I'm going to be done with it. And it just so happens this pint glass behind it, um, I think divides it down the center already, but I'll double check to see if it's equivalent on both sides. It just kind of happened that way. Oh, uh, not perfect. Good thing I checked. All right, so the, the center line is actually a little bit to the left. You can work out with it. There you go. So it was a little bit to the left of that line, just a hair, not a major deal. So I have my top. Now I'm going to break this down and make it smaller because this is the ellipse. And you've Watch this eight million times. So I imagine that you are a master at it by now. And I'm running through this too fast. I did not check to see if it was centered. It's a hair off. All right, so now I can put my lips in. And again, it's not easy putting an ellipse in. I'm just gonna. I can't get my hand in there, so I'm just want to keep this in the video. The more you make these, the better you'll become. It, you'll just know the shape will be more intuitive. That's why I'm trying to have you guys practice over and over and over. Okay. I can always make adjustments later. I'm just kind of doing this. Okay, all right. So, all right, so that's my ellipse there, and I already have the top of it done. How easy was that? Oops, I just made a mistake. <laughs> I just realized that the mouth of this is thinner. It's not a big deal. I can I make that adjustment pretty easy, easily, um, but I jumped the gun a little too fast there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the height of this volume part. So, and I'm going to compare it because it looks like that might be halfway. If not, it's close to it. So I'm going to measure. Better have a longer pencil than the one I just had. It's not halfway. I thought it was. It is um, the bottom. Actually, the shorter part, so it counts into the top one. It's like, like one, a little less than one and a half. So if I were to guess right here, let's see what happens. That's about right. So right here is right where the bottom of the stem meets. Okay, I'm going to run, run a line across. Before I forget, I'm going to change this ellipse and I need to know the width of the ellipse is because you really break it. You're trying to figure out this form. This is the widest part. The, is, it, is it wider than the stem? Is the stem as wide as that? Because I know the top of it is thinner than both. That being said, I'm just going to use a vertical line. I'm just using the edge of this ruler. I'm going to hold it straight up, basically like this. And you hold it straight up and see if everything lines up. Interesting. I did not see that. Really? That's weird. 
stem. This must be really cheap glass because the stem is crooked. It goes to the right. <laughs> this actually comes out and this goes in. So I'm going to make it even. Um, this is a pretty cheap glass. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to make the stem at the bottom the same width as the top. However, the width here is, is um, smaller. And I'm just gonna kind of use this ruler here and I'm gonna look how much difference is between the width and how far it goes in to the side. And I'm taking a quick visual assessment. It goes in about this much. I just marked it. It goes in just a little bit. So I'm gonna make that even on the other side. I can kind of look at both sides and say, hey, that looks pretty perfect. If you can want to use a piece of paper to double check this distance, go for it. All right, so now I'm just going to put the line straight up. So I basically just made the ellipse not as wide by shrinking it. And I'm just going to take off the other side of the ellipse. I'm going to erase some of the ellipse that I drew, but still the, the, the part here, I can do this all over again, is still an arc, and that arc still exists. So the arc's just going to cut a little bit more than what it was before, not that much. And then I have my little tiny baby arch, arcs. So it was really, really easy just to change that ellipse because I didn't have to do that much work. I just made it thinner. Okay. Good. Now I'm trying to find where the halfway, or not halfway point, but the widest point is. And it feels like it's about right here, right somewhere in the middle. And I'm just going to double check to see if it's in the middle between the very top. And then that mark I put in there at the bottom. So I'm going to put the tip of my pencil right at the widest point. And I'm going to slide my thumb down to the base of the cup. The cup part of the glass. Okay. It's not perfectly in the center, but it's pretty damn close. It's a little bit lower than center. So if this is the center, and I'm guessing the center right now, if this is the center between here and here, I'm just gonna see if it equals between there and there. No, it doesn't. But to be honest, I said it was lower than center, and that's about right. So this line right here that already exists, I'm just gonna take it over and make that my widest point. That's my widest part right here. And I'm going to mark it and mark it just so I know where to remember. Now, the easiest thing is to connect straight line construction. A lot of you want to go right in there and just put these curves in. Take your time. Straight line construction. It's going to be so much easier and faster in the end. Like this bowl took me a little while. It didn't take me that long because I used straight line construction. Um, so before I do that, though, I'm looking at the width of the stem. You look at the stem there. Um, it also goes out on a bit of a diagonal. I'd say the width of it. Is that what I put in? It's about right here. That's something you can just look and observe and say it's pretty damn thin. Um, if you have to make it smaller, you can make it smaller weight, weighter, and then it starts to widen out here at the bottom. But before I put those lines in, what I'm going to do first is put vertical lines in. You might be saying, why is he doing that? It flares out at the bottom. I can flare it out later. I'm just kind of putting this in because I'm giving myself point of contact to here. Now, if you just saw what I did there, I connected from that point 
to here, and then I connected from there to here with a straight line. And the here is the, the midpoint of the ellipse. So I'm gonna do that again on the other side, and that's how I get things to be symmetrical. Other than that, you're just, you're just never gonna get it right. You might as well just do it once, the right time, instead of doing it three or four times, and you're still not gonna get it right. So you kind of see that that feels symmetrical. That's easy for me to, something weird about it. No, it's not symmetrical. So that's easy for me to, to um, round this out. You can see that curve that I put there. How easy was that? Super easy, and I can easily put on this side because I have a guide. I just have to replicate what's happening on this side on that side. Not hard at all, and then here it starts to kind of flare back in. It just kind of blends back into the stem. The next thing I have to do is put the, um, don't tell me I'm not getting the end state. I just forget which line this was, that one or that one. And I feel like it's being pulled down. Okay, that's about right. Okay, I'm, I'm fine. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this ellipse down at the bottom. Now, if you remember, my one uh, thing about the ellipse is if you have a coin and I hold a coin a little bit lower from your eye level and a little bit lower and a little bit lower, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you go away from your eye level. This is gonna be, even though this is slightly bigger in terms of width than this ellipse, um, it's still gonna be bigger, even if it was small. Um, it's still gonna be bigger in terms of height. So I can, I can actually measure the height of this one and compare it to that one. And that'll tell me how big the one on the bottom is. So I'm gonna measure the height of the top ellipse and count it. One, two. That was e easy, it counted in twice. So the height of this ellipse is two of those. Easy. I'm just gonna use this here. One. So here's my lips. Or the template for my lips. And since I divided it, I times it by two, I already have my half mark there. It's a little high, a little high. here. I flare the bottom out to the center. I'm going to explain all this right now. So move this over. over. You can see this, right? I know there's a shadow on it. I'll try to move, move over, over. in and perfect this. I'm just trying to generally put it in there for now. Alright, so this, if you see the center line here, this is where the stem will kind of blend into it. But before that, I'm going to have to, um, the stem kind of goes wider on the way down, which I'll explain in a second. I just wanted to get that ellipse in there. Even on both sides. And I'm going to connect it to the top part. Connect 
back to the top part. And after a quick assessment, I made it way too wide. So I'm going to go back. Maybe do half the size, if that. into the thickness or into the um, stem itself. And to be honest, the stem's kind of thick in the middle, so maybe it flares out earlier, something more like this. So it's a little thicker at the bottom. Um, after that, if you wanted to, you could put another ellipse here at the bottom because there's a bit of a thickness to the glass there. But all you have to do is just draw another ellipse here at the bottom and you would basically just draw a whole other ellipse and you would m match it to the very, very bottom there. Now, I am reevaluating this. This seems to be kind of long. I keep staring at this, I keep staring at this, and I'm wondering if my original measurement was off. So I'm just gonna measure this uh, little guy. One, two, two or three quarter. One, two, two and a half. Shucks. Well, the problem is I could probably make it thinner this way. And, um, but that's fine. Now I'm just going to measure from here again because there's something that looks a little weird here. Right here is where this line should be. I kind of went a little too quick there. And that means this should go here. And this should go here. Feels a little better, okay. If anything, I could probably uh, make this stem slightly thinner, but that's fine. So now this little curve here would do something like this. And that's good because I didn't put it on the other side yet. I'm trying to figure this out. Again, I can't stress enough, drawing takes a while to figure out in terms of the form. So this feels, this side feels so much better. It feels a lot more accurate to what I'm drawing. I'm fine with that. I'm happy with the result. And just to reiterate, it is a funny angle to draw like this. It's kind of hard and difficult. So I can't stress enough just to take your board, unfold it, and put it down. Now you can draw a flat. You're gonna have a lot more control because you're you're on it now. Okay. 
So now, I have to work on this a little bit longer. Ouch. So I have this object done. This will be the next one. I would put the pint glass in at the very end. A little, little pod here. Um, I might put the coaster in now, and then these little pods. And after that, all I do is put the straws in, finished.